So, you guys might remember that on April 9th, 2020, I picked up my dream lizard from Brandon of Canadian Cold Bloods while maintaining safe social distance practices, of course. That beautiful lizard is Sabzi, which translates to green vegetables in Farsi. My green tree monitor, Varanus prasinus. Sabzi started off doing amazing. He was super shy, and I had to be very patient with him. I'd walk into the room, he'd teleport out of sight. I'd turn my head at my desk to watch him, he'd hide in a hollow and watch me. But I knew that this was the start to a beautiful friendship with my bright green lizard. Oh wait, where are my manners? If you guys are new here, hi, I'm Dion, and I make educational and hopefully entertaining videos about my experience keeping various species of specialty pets. If you want to learn more about pet reptiles, arachnids, isopods and more, please consider subscribing down below and don't forget to ding the notification bell afterwards so that you know when my next video is coming out. And if you want to see more cool updates, definitely consider checking out my other social media pages here. Anyways, back to the little green guy. So, one day I decided to take Sabzi out for a good look over and my heart sank as I examined his feet. I immediately noticed that two of his toes were discolored and the tissue on them looked damaged. I took to Facebook and made a post about the situation, seeking advice from a helpful community of experienced Prasinus keepers. Following my Facebook posting, I immediately called my vet Dr. Brown to book an appointment for Sabzi to see him. I was stumped. At first glance, the damage didn't look anything like stuck shed. At that point, Sabzi hadn't even shed in my care. If anything, maybe a fungal infection, but I was already having issues keeping humidity high enough, let alone high enough to cause an infection. It also wouldn't make sense to only have two toes infected. So there I was, a mere month into keeping my first monitor lizard and this happens. I was feeling ashamed, I was feeling clueless, and worried about my little buddy. I think the worst part was not knowing why or what caused this in the first place. How do you prevent something from happening when you don't even know what the cause of it was? Fortunately, I could tell Sabzi was otherwise doing really well. He was eating, he was alert, active, all signs he wasn't overly ill. At least I had that going for me. Visiting the vets though, that was really stressful. So with everything going on with COVID, I actually can't go inside for the appointment. I've had to leave Sabzi on a little table and then the staff took him in and Dr. Brown examined him and called me over the phone. We discussed the uh, um, plan of action and such. So we'll go through that when I get Sabzi home and we'll talk about what he said and what the treatment plan is going to be for the next little while. Yeah, it's a strange thing bringing your pet to a vet, dropping them off and not being able to be there for the examination. But obviously I, I trust everybody very much at Campus Estates. So yeah. Plan of action was to apply a silver ointment to the affected toes twice daily and to take Sabzi in for ceftazidine antibiotic injections every three days or so to prevent any sort of sepsis or infection. I also added a bird box with sphagnum moss to provide a humid hide, as well as a Zumed Reptifogger to elevate and maintain proper humidity. Good morning, everybody. So Sabzi and I are just about to head to the vet for the third time. He's about to get his second injection. Toes are looking a lot better, if I may say. This little guy's handling the stress so well, so I'm really grateful for that. All right, friends, so we just got back from the vets, and uh, well, you can see Sabzi's toes there, the ones that are affected. They're looking a bit better, believe it or not. But yeah, we're just going to go ahead and put him back into his enclosure, just so as to not uh, further stress him. You can see that the fogger is on beside his little house that he sleeps in with moist moss, just to sort of elevate the ambient humidity humidity sort of fighting to keep it at around 70 to 80 percent yeah they put the silva solution on his toes so you see here it is getting better so he got another injection of antibiotics it's just stuck to the other toe because it has ointment on it which we don't want to rub off uh, but yeah the toes are very much alive unfortunately things are getting better hey bud let him go home there you go buddy go ahead do you? Hey guys, so I just dropped Sabzi off at Campus Estates. Uh, there's like a little table where you place your animals because with COVID and everything, you can't actually go into the clinic. So we're just patiently waiting for him to get his fourth injection. Wait, I'm just kind of chilling here in my car. 
Alright guys, so Sabzi and I are back from the vet now and I'm just gonna put him back in his enclosure. His hands are also shedding, but you can see how the toes are looking. So that's just shed there, but there's the affected toe. So there's dead tissue coming off. He's a good boy. All right guys, so we're gonna be giving Sabzi his medication. I have my glove. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have Q-tips right now, but, but yeah, this is the Silva antibiotic solution that we are applying to Sabzi's affected toes. The man of the hour. Doesn't look fantastic. I don't know, but he's healing, which is good. There's some shed peeling off. Anyways, and yeah, that's pretty normal. They tend to not prolapse, but they always pop when you pick them up. Anyway, you can see shedding all over, so he's he's doing good. Here's the ointment. I hope that feels good, little dude. We've gently rubbed some of the antibiotic ointment on. Okay. All right guys, so I just packaged Sabzi back up in his little travel container. Do you guys remember the first week I got him and I showed him to you guys in the container, how tiny he was? Look at how much he's grown. When I got him, he was like this big body length, maybe. Not gonna fit in this thing pretty soon. He's growing so fast and I've only had him over a month. Anyway, so I got him in his uh, styrofoam box. Keep the lid on and we'll head over to the vets. Last injection, like I said. So I'm super grateful that after a few treatments, Sabzi's really come round. He sloughed off or shed off a lot of the dead skin that was on the affected toes. And at this point has now actually lost the nails that were on those toes. I'm hoping they'll grow back, but I'm also really grateful that he didn't lose the toes entirely. Neither Dr. Brown or myself have any idea what actually happened to him. It just did, and I'm just really grateful that we were able to resolve the issue with a little medical intervention. Now what I wanted to do is kind of show you guys all the positives about Sabzi. I've been able to put a lot of emphasis into creating a food motivated relationship between us. You could call it a bit of training. We've been doing all sorts of things. I've been working on different puzzles for him to find food. I've been working on training him to associate my hand with food. And this little guy, he's a really smart lizard. I've also started cupping crickets in my hand so that he has to investigate further to find them concealed within. It's really neat because half the time it instigates him to use his hands to catch the prey. Something really unique about this species. They'll often use their hands to try and get prey in tight spaces their head can't fit in. Well friends, I hope you enjoyed this long-awaited update on Sabzi. The next thing I plan to do for him is upgrade his enclosure by adding vines, thin branches, a few new plants and more. You'll be sure to get a video out of it. Let me know in the comments what you thought about today's video, and as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. Take care.